Thank you so much. Hello, hello, hello. It's so nice to be here and it's great to see all of you here today. Um, yeah, accessibility, right? Um, I know you have had a long week and a lot of talks and you're already looking forward to the after party, which is totally fine. And that is exactly why I am going to keep this light and easy. Uh, and yeah, in fact, after this session, you will never ever be alone again. You may be wondering why, what's going on? <laughs> Nothing to be worried about. I will let you into that pretty soon. But first, let me introduce myself. Hi, my name is Mariana Östalund, and I am an accessibility specialist at Selco Digital. I am a Master of Arts in Technical Communications and also the winner of the uh, Finnish Technical Communications Society's Tutti Suojanen Award. And after that tongue twister, I have nothing to be worried about for the rest of this presentation. <laughs> All right. About today, I have three things for you. First, I'm going to introduce you to your three new friends. And you can see that I'm referring to the feisty little uh, slogan in the beginning. And then I'm going to tell you why you met them in the first place. And last but not least, I'm going to tell you how this will help you in your future development work. So without further ado, let's get started. The first person I would like you to meet is called Axel. Um, Axel is a pretty fun guy. He loves swimming, he goes to concerts, he likes music, he reads a lot, so he's a smart one. And as many of us, he likes to scroll around the web. Uh, but the thing about Axel is he's completely blind. So to be able to scroll around the web, he uses a braille display as well as a screen reader device. So I might be over explaining here, but what braille displays and screen readers do is they interact with the system's code and then interpret the code to the user. So the information that we would get by looking at the page, the assistive technology does it for the user, right? Okay, enough about Axel for now. Next, I'm going to introduce you to Cecily who is an elderly woman, as she prefers to be called. She lives in her cottage together with her lovely cat, Mindy, who is a cutie, by the way. And Cecily is a modern lady. In fact, she is using a pad. Uh, well, not too modern because she's super terrified of it, you know, holding it back, being scared, it will just explode any minute on her face. You know a lot of Cecilies, I believe. But what Cecily does with her pad, except for paying her bills and important stuff like that, she's looking for information. That might be recipes, new knitting patterns, all that inf uh, important stuff. And the last person I would like to introduce to you is called Billy. And I need, to, uh, I need you to use your imagination a little bit with Billy, because Billy is you and Billy is me. Billy is any one of us in a certain situation. So imagine yourself coming home from work. You are sitting on a crowded bus. Uh, you've had a long day. It's loud. It's maybe a little hot. And you are kind of stressed out. And you have to do something on the bus. Stuff between people. It's shaking and uncomfortable. And you have to do something on your phone. Okay, those are the three people that you are now familiar to. But now we are going to take accessibility into this picture. What I'm trying to do here today is we are trying to get an understanding of these people. We are trying to understand how they use the web and what they might be experiencing. And that should be something that is very helpful for us or for you as developers. Let's start off with Axel. So I believe that most of us are sighted users, so we will never fully understand the experience of Axel. 
But what we can do is try to simulate it, and that is by closing our eyes. And that is exactly why, what I'm asking you to do. And don't worry if you don't feel comfortable enough to do that. You're not going to see anything on the screen, but this will feel more real if you do close your eyes. Okay, you may do it now. And what is going to happen next is we are going to land on a website. And a screen reader will read you a part of this website. And this will be a demonstration of how Axel uh, would feel on this website. All right. Ready, set, go. Oh. Knowledge Hub. Heading level three. Brand and Marketing Central. Makes your brand stand out even more. Human Resources System. Events Calendar. Heading level two. Take them out and get your tickets. Heading level four. Learning and Development Community. Heading level three. People Directory. You can keep your eyes closed. I'm going to play it once more. Sorry. Knowledge Hub. Heading level three. Brand and Marketing Central. Makes your brand stand out even more. Human Resources System. Events Calendar. Heading level two. Take them out and get your tickets. Heading level four. Learning and Development Community. Heading level three. People Directory. Okay, you can open your eyes now. I'm trying to see your faces, <laughs> a little bit curious, maybe. Uh, this is what you just heard. Something you expected? No. Okay, now that you can see it, I'm going to play the audio once again. Knowledge Hub. Heading level three. Brand and Marketing Central. Makes your brand stand out even more. Human Resources System. Events Calendar. Heading level two. Take them out and get your tickets. Heading level four. Learning and Development Community. Heading level three. People Directory. Something, off, something is off, you can tell, probably. <laughs> Uh, these demonstrations that I have here today, these are not 100% accurate or like in, in, in the real world cases, but these are to demonstrate, and that is exactly what we're going to do. There are three things that I would like to point out. Uh, the heading levels were kind of off. Uh, some of the elements didn't get focus at all, right? And the language was kind of funny, you could hear. Let's talk about that more. So about heading levels. Uh, generally, we all know that there should be one and only one heading level one on a page, right? And the next headings should be higher in hierarchy. So no jumping between heading levels, that is. But why this is important in accessibility is AT users, screen reader users, get the understanding of the page's structure with the headings. And now you could tell that something was off and you didn't quite understand the st uh, structure of this page, right? And yeah, and uh, also with headings, AT users also navigate with headings. So that's kind of important as well. And when you are working together with designers, uh, remember to remind them that headings should also visually look like like the, they should reflect the semantic of the headings, right? So let's take a look at the example we had here. We had a heading level three on brand and marketing central. Uh, then we had a heading level th two on this text paragraph. Then we had a heading level four on learning and development community. And then heading level three on people directory. Wrong. <laughs> What we should have had is a heading level one on the company name so that you would actually know you're on a company page. Then we would have the rest of the headings as heading level twos. Okay, moving on. About focus. If you have hidden elements in your code, the uh, AT will not recognize that at all. Even though you would see the part visually in the layout, AT does not recognize it. It's gone. So just double check your code that there are no hidden elements. 
And then about focus, you're going to hear more about this later on today. But screen readers interact with the click event, but in keyboard navigation, uh, tab index is needed. So let's take a look again at the example we had. There were two things that were hidden, the company name and read more about us. So quite important details were left out. And then language settings. Well, that's the, the one that you probably noticed the most in this example. Wrong language settings, they is it reduces the user experience and may even prevent the user from using the page if it's very bad luck. Uh, so just remember to check your language settings because it really matters. Uh, and just a reminder that in React, the default language attribute is English and in Next, there is no default. So you have to do it yourself. And in this example, we had the language in Finnish, which you could probably hear, but this would never be the case automatically. This was just to demonstrate the effect. All right, now we have talked about Axel. Next up, I'm going to talk to you about Cecily. And actually, I have the funniest story about her. Uh, it was just one day when Cecily received an email from her daughter saying, hi, mom, I found this amazing blog, and they have recipes to all the favorite foods that you used to make when I was a child. And they even have this amazing pie recipe. And well, Cecily gets the link and excited about it, opens it. And yeah, so the blog has links to many recipes, right? So when Cecily finds her link that she wants to check out, and she opens the page, an ad pops up. And Cecily, as an educated woman, knows that you should not press on anything you don't want to land on. But uh, the X in the right upper corner is kind of tiny. So with her trembling hands, she is trying and trying to press the button and obviously misses. And a page starts to load. Cecily panics and shuts the whole thing down. I mean, that was a close one. Okay, she gathers her courage again, manages to find the recipe, loves it. And when she gets back to the blog, uh, she is so grateful for the writer that she wants to write a comment. So she says, thank you so much for the recipes. Here are all my favorite dishes from when the kids were young. Greetings, Cecily. And yeah, Cecily knows that the youngsters put these funny little icons in their messages to spice it up. And she chooses a one that describes how great the fish was. All right. So now she would like to send the message, obviously. But it's kind of confusing because there is what what to press but she decides to try the the paper plane button so she presses it once nothing happens then she does it again and again and again and again and again and again and nothing happens so she gets frustrated and just closes the whole thing the next day, she receives a call from her daughter saying, Hi, mom, I, I noticed you found the blog. And Cecily says, yes, and I loved it. And I even tried to send a comment, but just couldn't do it. And her daughter says, well, actually, you, you managed to do that. I, I saw your comment. I saw your 57 other similar comments as well. Okay, well, obviously some things were off again. Um, three things that I would like to point out are the button size that was too small, the button did not have a visible label, and the system did not give any feedback to the user of what is going on whatsoever. About button size, uh, just generally make the buttons big enough so that all the Cecilies and people that are running around the streets and are on the buses can press the buttons without any problem. The target size should be at least 24 times 
24, but you know, it's a minimum, so. And then about visible labels. The buttons should always include a text that states what the button is doing. Uh, the text should be also big enough so that you can see it and visible for long enough. And there are just a few universal icons that we all understand in the same way. So by putting the visible label, we are making sure that everyone knows what is going to happen when you press a button, right? And an important announcement also that the button's accessible name in the code should be the same text that is on the button. Because when we use voice control, we want to use it right. And then about feedback in the system. The page should provide the user with information that says everything that is going on at a certain time. So loading indicators, error and success messages, and just other clear messages. Because users like Cecily, who are not used to using the web a lot, they are kind of terrified. And when they know what's happening, they are more likely to wait patiently and not go crazy. And yeah, well, that's about it. Now that we know more about Axel and Cecily, let's get back to ourselves, that is Billy. You remember the picture I painted. You're sitting on a crowded bus and you have had a stressful day and someone is yelling on the bus and someone is playing whatever that is and you want to buy tickets to a festival that is coming up. And you know that they are going to sell out in any minute, so you have to do it on the bus, even though it's not ideal. You go to the home page, and then you start to look for the artists that are performing this year, right? Then you find pictures from last year, and wow, it looks great, by the way. Then they provide information of the accommodation that is available, and about transportation, and then they also provide information of the weather, which is always great on festivals, at least in Finland, by the way. Then you check out the prices, and after dozing off for a minute and deciding that you will attending, uh, be attending only one day, that's all you can afford, you check the daily schedules. But yeah, now you have to go back to check the weather because you want to make sure that you are seeing your favorite artists in a good weather, right? So you press the back button and it goes to home page. And that if something is annoying, right? And eventually when you manage to put your tickets into the shopping cart, then you have to fill out a form of your personal information. There's a time limit and you have to type everything in by hand. And remember, you are so stressed out. Three ways we could help ourselves in this situation is providing multiple ways to navigate on the page, uh, have error recognition and feedback, and autocomplete. In multiple ways, what I actually mean uh, is that we should ensure that our users can navigate and locate themselves easily on the page. Uh, that means providing a navigation bar, search, sitemap, and then breadcrumble trails and highlighting the page that the user is in. Uh, and then the thing that happened in the example, make sure that the site history is implemented because in single page applications, if it's not implemented, the thing will happen when you press the back button, it doesn't go back, but it goes to the home page, which was annoying, remember? Then, in forms, instead of being just a nice little touch-up, autocomplete is actually very useful. So, like Billy on the bus that is shaking and it, he is in a hurry, it's very easy. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a nice, nice thing to have, but then there could be people who have, like, they have hurt themselves. It's very hard for them to write, so we need to assist them. And then also error recognition in forms. Let's talk about that right now. 
About autocomplete, yeah. So Billy on the bus, he or she would just need to type their name and it would help them out. What a great way to book tickets. And if there would be an error, because let's say a date, you can set up a date in so many different ways, right? Clear messages that say that something is wrong on this form and where the error has happened. Very useful. So what have we learned today? Now that we have uh, learned to know these users, we have learned about proper heading levels, no hidden elements for AT, language settings, big buttons, visible labels in buttons, uh, a system that gives the user feedback, uh, a system that is easy to navigate in, error recognition, and autocomplete in forms. So nine things. And actually, what my point here today was, it was to motivate you. Because when we are motivated to do something, we are more likely to remember. And it is also no coincidence that our characters are called Axel, Cecily, and Billy. It reminds you of accessibility, right? <laughs> okay. So remember them and yeah, stay motivated because remember that even though we talk about accessibility a, a lot through laws and le legislations, it's meant for users and for real needs. And it's actually very helpful for all of us. And even though these characters that I presented to you today are cartoon-like, there are real Axel, Cecilies and Billies out in this world. So remember Axel, Cecily and Billy. Remember accessibility. Thank you so much. <laughs>